Bangor. From the great north woods to the Rock Bound Coast and streaming live in HD worldwide at foxbangor.com, more people choose Good Morning Maine. Today on GMM, election officials reported a large turnout during Tuesday's primary election. We'll have the latest results. Plus, starting next month, Wild Acadia Camping Resort will be reopening to the public. In our top story, state police have made an arrest in a 36-year-old cold case. This and more local news right now. Good morning and welcome to Good Morning Maine. I'm Emma Smith. I'm Joe Cortez. Thanks for tuning in this morning. We have a lot of good things that are going to be happening today, starting with 80 degree temperatures. Yeah, it's a busy day and it's a beautiful day. Can't Grab complain. the sunscreen, maybe an umbrella if you want to stay yeah. cool out there. Yep. Let's turn things over to Devin Biggs. He has the first check of our forecast. And thank you very much, Joe and Emma. Happy Wednesday. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Patriot Homes and Design Center in Ellsworth. We do it all from modular, mobile, and site-built homes to porches, garages, roofs, and more. All righty, things looking pretty decent out there this morning. We had a few rain showers overnight. Those have since gotten out of here. And we're going to see a lot of sunshine today. A few clouds will also try to sneak in here from time to time, though, as we do have an area of low pressure just off toward the north and east. It's sending some clouds in our direction, though, but we do not have to worry about that too much today, though. There will still be a decent amount of sunshine and a high UV index value today as well. They'll be at an 8. Well, otherwise, so a lot of sunshine today, maybe a few clouds moving in later on, but otherwise, looking pretty nice for the next day or so. But the wind's not too bad either at around 5 to 10 miles per hour. They will really begin to calm down later on tonight, but they will start to pick up as we head towards the daytime tomorrow as our next system starts to approach. Lower 80s say not too bad, right? Under a partly cloudy sky, and that north wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Moving ahead towards tonight, lower 50s, not too bad, right? Under a partly cloudy sky and the wind overall looking nice and calm. And for tomorrow, mostly cloudy, getting windy out there with highs in the mid 70s. Now, south wind gusting up to about 25 miles per hour at times. And to our early forecast for the rest of the morning period, a lot of sunshine, maybe a few passing clouds. Temperatures making into the 80s by the afternoon period. Your full five day forecast is coming up. Joe and Emma. Devin, thank you. After 36 years, the state police have made an arrest for an abandoned infant found in Frenchville, Maine. On December 7, 1985, a baby Jane Doe was discovered by a dog that carried the infant less than 700 feet to the owner's home. After further investigation, state police determined that the baby was born and abandoned in below zero temperatures at a gravel pit in Frenchville. State police homicide detectives used innovative technology to utilize DNA and genetic genealogy genealogy to identify the baby's mother of Jane Doe as 58-year-old Lee Ann Daigle of Massachusetts. Uh, there was a tremendous amount of investigative effort put in from day one by the detectives back in 1985, um, and that effort has continued on. We've had several successes with these unsolved cases, and we'll have uh, several more, but it's, it's, a, it's, it's good that we can bring uh, resolution to the family um, and bring closure to to a very tough case. Leanne Daigle was arrested Monday in Lowell, Massachusetts and was transported back to Maine. She is charged with murder and is currently being held at the Aroostook County Jail in Holton. Police are investigating an incident in which a car crashed into the Riverside Inn on State Street in Bangor yesterday afternoon. According to Bangor Police Sergeant Wade Betters, the Jeep had left the roadway, traveled through the parking lot, and slammed into the building. There were no major injuries, however, parts of the inn were evacuated when the vehicle started leaking fluids. A witness tells us the incident happened in a flash. I saw that I hear bang, real loud. And then he hit the ACB in the corner by the fire station. Then um, it kept going. Sergeant Betters says the driver likely experienced a medical event before losing control of the vehicle. The Bangor Police Department is currently investigating the accident. And now to your updated election results from overnight. We'll start with the Republican battle between Liz Caruso and Bruce Poliquin for the right to take on incumbent Jared Golden this November. Bruce Poliquin takes the win to represent Republicans in Maine's Congressional District 2. Poliquin getting over 60% of the votes. Liz Caruso falls short with just over 12,000.
And next, we have the update on the race for House District 11. Tiffany Strout stands as the leader with 269 votes, Kendall Alley behind by about 150 votes, sitting down at 115. That race is still only with 55% of the votes in right now. Switching over to House District 37. No update from overnight. Reagan Paul still leads Kevin Kell, but only 20% of the votes have been counted. We'll keep you updated. On to House District 38, where has Jessica Warwick sitting ahead of Benjamin Himes. As of right now, only 22% of the votes are in for that race, but Warwick has a narrow lead heading into this morning. For House District 59, Republican James Orr has won this race by over 100 votes from the Lewiston area. And in the state Senate for District 7, we had a three-way battle, but Democrat Nicole Krahowski has been ruled the winner with a commanding 6,000 votes ahead of Brian Langley and Benjamin Michael John. Sticking with the state Senate in District 10, no update from overnight, but Peter Lyford holds that narrow lead over Robert Cross. And finally, District 16, another three-way battle for the state Senate. Michael Perkins leading the pack with 845 votes. Kevin Kitchen in second, and Mark Andre is sitting in third. Those are your morning election results from Good Morning Maine. Switching over to some other news, Maine State Police are planning a major reorganization of the agency in light of ongoing staffing shortages. A.J. Douglas talked to the commissioner about how these changes will impact the people of Maine. They looked at a data-driven process that said, well, we need to change the structures that we've been utilizing for the last several decades. Main State Police have decided to once again reorganize their structure to accommodate the number of troopers needed on the front lines while satisfying the need for more officers in leadership roles. The agency will begin combining troop field groups to focus on areas that have shown higher levels of demand. It's going to be that, that kind of ability to to, to move them and assign them, you know, differently for a shift to prevent that negative impact and yet maintain that coverage that we need. State police also plan to open positions for mental health providers. This appears to be the root cause or the common theme that keeps bringing us back to that house. And, you know, so many times there are people within that household that want this person to get some assistance, right? And they don't know where to start. So I think that's, we, we hope to be the, the jumping off point for that family to have somebody from the state police come alongside of them and say, hey, what's going on? Did you know about this? Did you know about these resources? The agency wants residents of Maine to know the mission of the department remains the same. Uh, they're going to have the same troopers patrolling their areas that they do uh, today. And I think that's paramount to community policing. And one thing we will never give up on or compromise on is the quality of the people we hire. Colonel Cody says the changes will begin in phases beginning this summer. State police plan to see additional changes like adding body cams in early 2023. In Augusta, A.J. Douglas, ABC 7, Fox 22. The time is now 8.08. Coming up next on Good Morning Maine, Jody Hersey sat down with both gubernatorial candidates. Hear from Governor Mills and Paula Page after the break. But first, let's take another look at our beautiful forecast today. Partially cloudy skies, a little bit of sunshine out there. Tonight, the temperatures drop down to a low of 52. Those clouds will be sticking around overnight and into tomorrow. Not too much sunshine for your Thursday. A little bit of wind and the temperatures back in the mid-70s. As a working mom of five, I'm feeling the burden of rising prices. But instead of getting inflation under control, the liberals in Washington are attacking America's tech innovators. Talk about being out of touch. The left's bill would take away the technology we depend on, put our personal data at risk, make China stronger and America weaker. I don't understand how any Republican senator could support this liberal nonsense. Tell Senate conservatives to stand up for American technology. This isn't your parents' photo booth. Premier Limousine and DJ presents the latest in photo booth technology with the all-new 2022 Air Booth. Print out everyone's pictures in beautiful full-color photos and have them sent directly to your phone. The new Air Booth is available for weddings, birthdays, class reunions, anniversaries, and corporate events with some of the best and most fun props around. You can book the Air Booth, Limousine, and DJ services separately or take advantage of our very popular package deals. Contact us at Premier Limousine and DJ. 
ABC7, Fox 22, Tossie's Checkout Convenience Store, and Bombshell Beauty and Spa. Want to send you to see Leonard Skinner live in concert on their Big Wheels Keep On Turning Tour with special guests Marshall Tucker Band and The Outlaws Sunday, July 3rd at the Main Savings Amphitheater in Bangor. Sign up to win tickets by registering at Tossie's Checkout Convenience Store in Glenburn. Stop by and check us out. And Bombshell Beauty and Spa in the Brewer Shopping Center. Win tickets to see Leonard Skinner July 3rd on the Bangor Waterfront. I cried when a mammogram showed a lump that turned out to be breast cancer. I almost skipped that mammogram because of my workload, but it may have saved my life. If you're a woman between the ages of 50 and 74, talk to your provider about being screened for breast cancer. After treatment and surgery last fall, I'm so relieved to be cancer-free now. Watch for changes in your breasts and learn more about breast cancer screening at ScreenMaine.org. Democrat Janet Mills is running for re-election for Maine governor, and her opponent, Republican Paul LePage, is no stranger to the Blaine House either. He served two terms from 2011 to 2019. Jody Hersey sat down with both candidates who say they'd like another chance to work for the people of Maine. Fight all the gas is unnecessary. It's just unnecessary. I hate the prices at the pump. It's outrageous. And to see that ExxonMobil declared another $6.6 .6 billion in profits the first quarter of this year alone, that is outrageous. Now, can one governor cure that, address that effectively? I don't know. I can't really call up Vladimir Putin and tell him to get the heck out of Ukraine. I wish I could, and I wish he'd listen to me. Rising prices at the pump may be the only issue Governor Janet Mills and her opponent, Paul LePage, agree on. The two who are unopposed on their respective party's ticket in the primary don't see eye to eye on abortion. I guess I won't be surprised anymore if the U.S. Supreme Court uh, overturns Roe v. Wade, but I'll be extremely disappointed. Having lived through the era before Roe v. Wade, there's a place for everything in this society. I prefer adoption over abortion. I don't uh, prescribe to using abortion as a form of contraception. But I think the state should be making that decision, not uh, unelected officials in Washington. Mills and LePage strongly differ on the state of Maine's economy as well. What I've done with the help of the legislature, bipartisan group in the legislature, is to use the surplus that we've carefully managed to um, and use that surplus, 60% of it's going back to the people of Maine right now in the form of $850 checks. You cannot pay able-bodied people to stay home and accept and expect to have a, a good society, a good, a good uh, economy. If, if you're better today than four years ago, then I'm not your guy. But if you liked it better four years ago, then I am your guy. In Bangor, I'm Jody Hersey for ABC7 and Fox 22. The time is now 8:12. After the break, Beth Jones caught up with the Secretary of State Shanna Bellows, who visited several polling locations. We'll hear from her next. Plus, the rising prices of goods and services continues to tighten its grip on American families. Your national spotlight coming up. Thinking twice about that summer road trip due to high gas prices? Well, with an electrified Toyota, you can pack your bags today. Right now, you can get savings on amazingly fuel-efficient Toyotas at the Toyota Summer Sales Event. Save fuel with an electrified all-wheel drive RAV4 hybrid with 40 MPG and up to a 580-mile driving range. Plus, get 1.75 financing on most RAV4 models. So, take that summer road trip. But first, see your New England Toyota dealer, your all-wheel drive headquarters. Toyota, let's go places. Breathe in. Can you sense it? The feeling of becoming something greater? Here in the heart of Maine, you'll find a place that the innovators of tomorrow have called home for the last 150 years. The University of Maine. Ranked as one of the nation's top research institutions, our opportunities know no bounds. Because UMaine isn't just a destination. It's a gateway to new horizons that shape who we are. We are UMaine. You don't just go to work, you do the work. And it shows you're committed to training and inspiring others. And you play as hard as you work. For that, you need a vehicle. 
as strong as you are to get you where you want to go. Dedication. That's a Varney value and one you'll find at Varney Buick GMC, Hogan Road, Bangor. When it comes to covering local news, stories that matter, things that affect you, there's no better place to turn than right here on Fox 22. We make the most of your time keeping it local and giving you the facts. Especially when they are breaking, because there is nothing more important to all of us than getting it right. Local news weeknights at 10 with Beth Jones and Peter Dubois on Fox 22. Last night, Beth Jones caught up with Secretary of State Shanna Bellows. Let's take a look. We are here with Maine Secretary of State Shanna Bellows. Shanna, thank you so much for joining us again on Primary Day. We appreciate you coming. It's my pleasure. So we know that you've been kind of bouncing around to some polling locations across the state of Maine today. Really kind of a trek for you. Where have you been and what have you been seeing at the polls today? We started in Biddeford, moved yeah. up to South Portland, Lisbon, Hamden, yeah. and all across the state, what we are seeing is civility, congeniality, and a commitment by our poll workers, clerks and wardens, mm -hmm. who are just so excited uh, to make democracy work for Mainers. You know, you talk about the, the congeniality uh, and, and, and folks being cordial, but that's really important considering what the country has been through, and, and that's what you're seeing at the polls. Are you relieved to kind of see that be the mood? We took a deep sigh of relief because it is so important that we come together as Americans on Election Day. This is what democracy is. This is democracy in action. Mm -hmm. And our poll workers are our friends, our neighbors, people from the community. Mm -hmm. Anyone can volunteer to be a poll worker. Mm -hmm. And by law, there are poll workers from both major political parties, Democrats and Republicans, working together to make the election work for their fellow townspeople. And that's so important. Speaking of poll workers, you know, we hear, we hear a lot about job openings staff shortages. Does Maine have enough uh, election workers right now? And if not, how do you go about recruiting more? So we had enough for this June, but I was hearing stories, uh, people out because of COVID, mm -hmm. uh, emergency calls to volunteers saying, hey, can you work a double shift today instead of a single shift? Can you come in early because there's a shortage? So, and we are seeing turnover across the state because what we've been through with threats against uh, our clerks uh, in towns and nationally, mm -hmm. uh, we are seeing a lot of retirement. So there are job openings mm -hmm. among the professional clerks. And then for poll workers, this is great. 16-year-olds, uh, 17-year-olds yeah. um, can pre-register to vote and serve as a poll worker. So we do a lot of recruitment in that area. And we're encouraging people, if you have questions about the election, if you're wondering how elections work, if you have concerns about security, mm -hmm. volunteer at the polls and see for yourself how it works. Exactly. Yeah. It is free, fair, and secure. Take a look. Now, you did mention that turnout is low. Are you surprised by that? We're not surprised because usually it's the top of the ticket. In an off year, it's usually the gubernatorial primaries. Mm -hmm. But because that race is already set, we know it's current Democratic Governor Janet Mills mm -hmm. versus former Republican Governor Paula Page. Mm -hmm. They will be facing off in November. And so that in itself uh, depresses turnout a little bit. Mm -hmm. Of course, in Congressional District 2, you do have a Republican primary, uh, but Democrats don't necessarily have a reason to turn out on that side because mm -hmm. they know it's going to be Representative Jared Golden. Um, the one race where there's a lot of excitement is the special election, mm -hmm. Senate District 7. That is seen by some as a bellwether for November because mm -hmm. that is a purple district there. Right. And you have current Democratic Representative Nicole Grahowski mm -hmm. facing off against former uh, Republican Senator Brian Langley with a Green Independent, yeah. Benjamin Michael John, in the race as well. All right. Well, we thank you so much for your time and sharing your insight with what you are seeing across Maine at the polls today. We really appreciate it. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. Yeah. Hello. We're back, I guess. Excuse That's one, us. <laughs> one little thing. We're having a little conversation, but <laughs> the time is now 8.20. Let's get a full look at our, at our forecast. Meteorologist Devin Biggs is in with the latest. Good morning, Devin. 
Thank you very much, Joe and Emma. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Patriot Homes and Design Center in Ellsworth. We do it all from modular mobile and site build homes to porches, garages, roofs, and more. Alrighty, not too bad out there this morning. Maybe a few clouds trying to sneak in here. But otherwise, a good amount of sunshine. I hope you plan to go outside today. It will be a great day to do so, though. But we are watching our next system. It looks a little bit like this here with some storms across the upper Midwest. And a warm front right about in here is going to be tracking in our direction as well. We'll notice some warmer temperatures and humidity that will begin to move in here later on. But wave heights are not too bad right now at all. If you're heading close to the ocean, water temperatures may still be a little low. But two to three foot wave heights being noted at this point. So nothing too dramatic happening at this point. The winds will be calm today, though, really calming down later on tonight. And then by tomorrow, look what happens. So gusty winds up to about 25, maybe 30 miles per hour will be possible, though that'll be out of the south. So we'll have to watch for more winds. I'll begin to move in ahead of our next system. We're average high is 75 degrees. We'll get above that today by making it into the lower 80s with middle to upper 70s by Thursday and Friday. Then cooling off as a cold front moves in by the weekend of the middle to upper 60s, then back in the 70s as we head towards Monday and Tuesday. Let's take out the muggy meter, though. When that cold front passes, of course, we'll notice the dew points all rise briefly into the 60s, maybe getting close to the 70s in a few spots. So cold front passes through Friday and Saturday, hence why the temperatures fall off. The dew points will also begin to, begin to improve after that. But if you're heading out the door today, though, the UV index is very high. It's at an 8, so that means a bird time of simply 15 minutes. So the hat, the sunglasses, sunscreen, shade needed as you have the door to avoid a bad sunburn. But future cast for today, partly cloudy is what we're going with today, but a lot of sunshine will be expected. Maybe some clouds later on to the day into the evening time frame, no. But by tomorrow, though, maybe a few more clouds trying to approach. But overall, looking pretty decent before rain begins to approach as we head towards Thursday night and the parts of Friday morning. So a forecast for today, get outside. Enjoy it. Lower 80s under a partly cloudy sky. That north wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Later on tonight, lower 50s on the way under a partly cloudy sky. And the wind overall looking nice and calm. For tomorrow, middle 70s under a mostly cloudy sky. Getting windy out there as well. That south wind getting up to about 25 miles per hour. Alrighty, here's a look at your extended forecast brought to you by Patriot Homes and Design Center in Ellsworth, showing storm chances returning by Friday. Temperatures in the upper 70s, upper 60s on Saturday with a chance for storms, and a few showers on Sunday, highs in the mid 60s. Your favorite restaurants for half off. It's half off dining from Fox 22 and ABC 7. Here's this week's featured deal. Join us at Fairmont Market in Bangor for hand tossed pizza, sandwiches, salads, and much more. Serving our community since 1925. Fairmont Market is proof that great customer service and delicious food stand the test of time. Open seven days a week. On sale Thursday at 9 a.m. A limited supply available half off dining from Fox 22 and ABC 7. Fathers play a special role in people's lives. And this Father's Day, ABC7 and Fox 22 want to help you show your dad how much he is appreciated with a special Father's Day giveaway. We're giving away a $50 gift certificate from the Central Street Farmhouse in Bangor, a $50 gift certificate from Hashi's Auto Enhancing in Levant, and a $50 gift certificate from CNK Variety in Herman. All you have to do is go to our Facebook page, Fox ABC Maine, and like and comment. Steve Harvey powers the X team. If roles were reversed, what might a turkey do to you on Thanksgiving? Eat my drumstick. Loaded with X team confidence. <laughs> Some men are shaped like what kind of nut? Nutcracker. <laughs> and X team powers. Fill in the blank. Blank daddy. Hot dog. <laughs> You'll love the X team. Hot dog daddy. <laughs> on Family Feud. Weeknights at 7 on Fox 22. And now on to the economy and the rising concerns surrounding inflation. The Federal Reserve is expected to raise interest rates again today, higher than expected. It's all in an effort to try to slow down inflation. 
ABC's Ike Jachi is in Washington with the details. This morning, the rising prices of goods and services continues to tighten its grip on American families. Got three kids, two teenagers and a young one, so it, anything helps. We barely make it, and I get paid pretty good at my job. Families are now spending nearly $350 more every month than they did for the same things last year. Gas is up $5 a gallon, around 50% higher from last year. Groceries are up too, almost 12%, and rent up 26%. Marilyn Bailey is retired, but the rising cost of her rent now has her looking for work. I'm looking for a part-time job at 75. The Labor Department says producer prices rose 10.8% last month compared to the same time last year. The Federal Reserve responding. They're expected to raise the cost of borrowing by three quarters of a point, all in hopes of slowing down the economy. This inflation uh, is very painful and it has to come down. So the only way of doing that is getting those interest rates up and slowing the growth rate in the economy. That economic slowdown means the cost of credit cards, car loans, and mortgages will rise even more at a time Americans are already seeing rising prices for just about everything. President Biden in Philadelphia Tuesday reminding Americans that unemployment remains at record lows, but pushing back at his critics who say his administration's spending policies, including pandemic stimulus funds, fueled this inflation. I don't want to hear any more of these lies about reckless spending. We're changing people's lives. Jobs are back, but prices are still too high. Our work isn't done. The Federal Reserve is trying to tame current inflation without plunging the economy into a recession. But some experts warn the country may still be headed for one anyway. Still to come here on the second half of our show, Wild Acadia Camping Resort will be reopening to the public. We'll tell you all the changes ahead of the grand opening. Plus, we'll have the latest out of the Hollywood Nation, and your midpoint is coming up in just a minute. Kids eat free all summer long. Find out where at hotlunchsummer.com. Ooh, it's a hot lunch summer. Ooh, it's a hot lunch summer. Ooh, it's a hot lunch summer. When Natural Living Center wants to know the local forecast, they log on to foxbangor.com. Natural Living Center offers natural groceries, organic produce, the largest selection of supplements in the area, gluten-free products, and more for your health. The Baxter's Block Party is bringing down the house. Your funeral suit looks like the one you got married in. Part of me died that day. So be there or be square. I don't like the idea of you guys posting stuff on the internet. If Mandy's spreading something viral, you better pray it's on the internet. <laughs> All week long. You get to live here rent-free with your husband. Mom gets to live here rent-free with her husband. He's got you there, honey. Believe me, I pay. Last Man Standing. This afternoon, starting at 4 on Fox 22. There's one number you need to know. It's called Joe. It's Wednesday, June 15th of 2022. We're halfway through the month of June. There are six days until the summer, and the forecast is coming up in just a moment. A little history. 807 years ago today, the Magna Carta was signed at Runnymede, England by King John. It's considered the birth of modern democracy. Birthdays include actress Helen Hunt, who's 59, actress Courtney Cox is 58, actor Neil Patrick Harris is 49, and Mr. and Mrs. Harrison Ford celebrate their 12th wedding anniversary. And if you're visiting Maine, you came just in the nick of time for National Lobster Day. The best lobsters in the world are hauled in by Maine lobstermen every day. But you already knew that. Of course. Of course. That's what we're known for. Of course, yeah. Lobsters, donuts, whoopie pies. <sighs> even in the wintertime. Yep. I know, I know. That's a, That was one of the fun things when I first got up here in Maine, God, almost three years ago now. It's just, my sister gave me this sheet of just all the things Maine was known for with the Maine coons, the, yeah. the moose, the all, all the different parts, the lighthouses and everything. And I was like, there's so much more in Maine than just lobsters. With right. a lot of people from being from out of state, people like affiliate, you know, from Massachusetts, it's, just, it's bad drivers, you know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, but you can't put that on a keychain. No, no, you can't. You can't put, I mean, you can if you put mass, you know what, and you know how you finish and that And that sentence, is a bumper sticker. It is yeah. a bumper sticker, I have respect yeah. for that, especially if you're in Maine riding around with that on it. Oh, yeah, I know. We, we love out-of-staters here, though. We do. We bring them in, and we love it because, you know, it's a big tourism industry up here. There's a lot of people, but most 
people, if not all, we love when I talk, yeah, we <laughs> air quotes, but most people, if not all, when I talk to them about visiting Maine, they always have something positive to say, whether it's yeah. the people, the sceneries out there, or just the different way of living up here. And that's one of the important things because it's always the way life should be. Yep. I've had that blessing of experiencing that too when I travel. Love that. Well, let's turn it over to meteorologist Devin Biggs. Good morning, Devin. And thank you very much, Joe and Emma. Happy Wednesday. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Patriot Homes and Design Center in Ellsworth. We do it all from modular, mobile, and site-built homes to porches, garages, roofs, and more. Alrighty, things looking pretty decent out there this morning. We had a few rain showers overnight. Those have since gotten out of here. And we're going to see a lot of sunshine today. A few clouds will also try to sneak in here. From time to time, though, as we do have an area of low pressure just off toward the north and east, it's sending some clouds in our direction, though, but we do not have to worry about that too much today, though. There will still be a decent amount of sunshine and a high UV index value today as well. They'll be at an 8. Well, otherwise, though, a lot of sunshine today, maybe a few clouds moving in later on, but otherwise, looking pretty nice for the next day or so. But the wind's not too bad either at around 5 to 10 miles per hour. They will really begin to calm down later on tonight, but they will start to pick up as we head towards the daytime tomorrow as our next system starts to approach. Lower 80s say not too bad, right? Under a partly cloudy sky, and that north wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Moving ahead towards tonight, lower 50s, not too bad, right? Under a partly cloudy sky, and the wind overall looking nice and calm. And for tomorrow, most of cloudy, getting windy out there with highs in the mid 70s. Now, south wind gusting up to about 25 miles per hour at times. And to our early forecast for the rest of the morning period, a lot of sunshine, maybe a few passing clouds. Temperatures making into the 80s by the afternoon period. Your full five day forecast is coming up. Joe and Emma. Thank you, Devin. And we love to see that sunshine. Yep. Makes you feel like summer's already here. All week. Well, starting this July, Wild Acadia Camping Resort will be reopening to the public. Formerly known as Wild Acadia Fun Park, the resort will still have its ropes course and water slides, but it's also going to feature 90 brand new campsites with water and electricity for those electric vehicles and camper trailers. James Allen explained the benefits of creating these new amenities. We decided to invest in the property. Uh, my brother and I, who own the property, uh, grew up here in Down East Maine and have a great uh, love for the area and wanted to invest uh, in the area uh, for, for the people of Down East Maine and beyond. Along with the campsites, the, the resort is also building a new pool and built-in water playground while keeping the zip line and outdoor climbing wall. It's kind of hard to miss, too, when you're driving down... Was I it know. one going that way? Yep, I yeah, was yeah. shocked that it was closed all the last season, but it makes sense now that they had a lot to do in preparation. A lot of work, a lot of work. That looks like a fun birthday party. So kids, if you're watching, maybe ask mom and dad to head out there for yeah. a birthday party. If you got one coming up or, you know, half birthdays, I've heard that's a thing. Right. I'm <laughs> celebrating my friend's half birthday this Friday. There it is. There we go then. Yeah. So maybe you guys should head out to the water park. <laughs> yes, that sounds good. For the latest in what's happening in Hollywood. Here's ABC's Chris Watson. Was it honestly the best? BTS members want a break, but their record label insists they don't want to break up. In a video posted online to mark their ninth anniversary, the global superstars say all seven members are, quote, going on a hiatus to work on solo projects, have some fun, and, quote, experience lots of things. The K-pop stars didn't say how long their hiatus will last, and their record label disputes the word hiatus, saying in a statement that BTS will still be working on projects as a group as well as individually. Kevin Bacon was shocked to learn that there's a fast food chain in Argentina that uses his name and image. Appearing on Jimmy Kimmel Live, the actor was shown the Kevin Bacon fast food logo for the first time. Well, I gotta tell you, I think there's other Kevin Bacon restaurants that I don't get any money for. Bacon joked that he was going to file a lawsuit. For his part, Kimmel was surprised Bacon was hearing about the restaurant for the first time on his show. Celebrating birthdays today, Oscar winner Helen Hunt turns 59. Friend star Courtney Cox is 58. And rapper and actor Ice Cube is 53. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. A New York State archivist discovered documents of a court fight where a former enslaved woman won the right to have her son returned to her. It's the case of Sojourner Truth. She was born into slavery in 1797 in Hudson Valley, New York, and walked off the property of her final over in 1826. Her son Peter was sold into slavery in Alabama during a time when slavery was being phased out in New York. 
It was ruled that his sale to another state was illegal. Case documents were discovered earlier this year by a New York State archivist. They will go on display at the Ulster County Courthouse in Kingston, New York today, which is the same place where she fought for her son nearly two centuries ago. So just the fact that she was a woman going up against uh, powerful men, that's extraordinary right there. And then you add in race, and then you add in class. So it's, it's an amazing story. One of the things that's most uh, striking to me is this small little mark, this little X. This is Sojourner Truth's handling. This is her DNA left behind on this document. And the rest is legalese and all of that. This is Sojourner Truth. This is where she shows up in this story. Isabella Van Wagenen, as she was known then, went on to become an outspoken abolitionist and women's rights advocate. Here's a look at some of the upbeat stories making headlines today. Adding color in a show of solidarity, Salem, Massachusetts is painting nine crosswalks in the colors of the rainbow from the courthouse to the public schools. City councilors call it an inclusivity statement. Newark native and NBA legend Shaquille O'Neal returned to his hometown to announce the refurbishment of the basketball courts at David L. Warner Park, now called the Comeback Court. Also, a ceremony was held for a new 33-story apartment complex in Newark. The penthouse will be Shaq's new home. Amazon's drone delivery service is about to take flight in a trial run in Lockford, California. Residents are abuzz, anxious to try out the same-day service. Amazon says Lockford was chosen because it's remote. Those who try Prime Air will offer feedback for the program. And a full moon reached its closest point to Earth this morning in a phenomenon called the Strawberry Moon. The name comes from Navajo and Native American tradition when there's a supermoon during strawberry harvest season. And those are some of the other stories making headlines on ABC7. Still to come here this morning, Dave Peck joins us for sports as the week is full of high school baseball and softball playoffs. We'll have all the results next. But first, here's a quick look at your overnight forecast. Temperatures are back up in the 80s today. Partially cloudy skies. We'll see a little bit of sunshine out there as well. Tonight, those clouds will be sticking around. Temps dropping down to a low of 52. This is perfect summer weather, day and night. Tomorrow, though, the clouds are going to cover most of the area with a little bit of wind, and we'll see those temperatures warming up to the mid-70s. Ready for this Catch-22? The mental health struggles you want to work on are the same reasons you're putting off therapy. You're stuck. Sondermind makes it easy to team up with the right therapist and turn stuckness into strength. Angie's List is now Angie, and it's easier than ever to get your projects done right. With Angie, you can connect with top pros and see ratings and reviews. And when you book and pay through Angie, you're covered by our happiness guarantee. Check out Angie.com today. Angie and done. General Rental Center has been serving Central Maine with equipment and tool rentals for more than 30 years. Our extensive inventory contains everything you need to get the job done right. Our professional knowledgeable staff is here to make sure that you get the highest quality rental items to complete your project and that they have been serviced and maintained to the highest standards. Power brooms to get that sand off the lawn, leaf blowers, brush chippers, stump grinders, aerial lifts, tillers, and excavators. We rent most everything. If you don't see it in our online catalog, please ask for it. If we don't have the item you need, we would be happy to help you find it. ABC7, Fox 22, McLaughlin Seafood, and Firehouse Subs want to send you to see Leonard Skinner live in concert on their Big Wheels Keep On Turning Tour with special guest Marshall Ducker Band and The Outlaws Sunday, July 3rd at the Main Savings Amphitheater in Bangor. Sign up to win tickets by registering at McLaughlin's Lobster, Seafood, and Takeout in Bangor, specializing in live Maine lobsters and the freshest seafood, and Firehouse Subs in Bangor, where a portion of your purchase goes toward providing equipment for first responders. Win tickets to see Leonard Skinner July 3rd on the Bangor Waterfront. I heard about you. You're that smart kid. Young Sheldon, boy genius, an origin story. Yes, that's me. A small town boy. Young man. Yes, you. With supersonic hearing. Visionary vision. Cheeky little me one. You know you don't belong there. And a heightened sense of smell. Ew. Put your shoes back on. Young Sheldon, five times a week. Weekdays at 6 on Fox 22. You can't smell this. Yes, I can. The most talented home cooks return. There's someone from every season. This is MasterChef back to win. Don't miss an all new episode tonight only on Fox.
Good morning everyone. Well, Regional Championship Tuesday has come and gone. Eight Northern Maine plaques handed out between softball and baseball teams vying for a spot in Saturday's state championship. Starting with Class A top seeded Bangor down in Augusta taking on Edward Little. Colton Trish on the mound and he was on fire. Gets Drew Smith on strikes. Trish on his game on Tuesday, bottom second after a Luke Mitzbrenner walk and two pass balls. Max Clark drops in a single. That brings home the run. 1-0 Bangor. Same score in the sixth inning now. Eddies have first and third with two down. And look at the play from Yates. Emerson saves the run and the lead for the Rams. And that would be the game-saving play. Bangor wins 1-0. And they're headed back to the state finals for the second straight year. And it's amazing that I can just put fastballs in the zone. I expect hitters to get, uh, hit ground balls and then just have my defense make plays, so it's awesome. All right, to the softball side of things now, Class A, Meselonski and Skowhegan battling for the A North Finals. This one, all Eagles. Top five, Maddie Wilson knocks home Morgan Wills on a single up the middle. Part of a five-run inning for the Eagles, and that was all the run support Wills needed. She was dominant, gets Anna Perkins down swinging, and then sends Reese Danforth back to the dugout to end the inning. Wilson at the dish again, this time an infield single makes it 10-0, and that would be the final. Mesolonski goes on to win it in six innings, booking their trip to the state finals as well. We had a rough start, and I think we've just, like, exceeded everyone's expectations in these past four, five, six games that we've had. All right, Tomb Hay now for the Class B North Baseball Final. Ellsworth facing off against Old Town. We picked this one up in the sixth. Old Town with a 2-0 lead till David Baugh rips one into a gap, scoring two and ties the ball game at that. And that is a name you will want to remember, folks. Now in the seventh, a passed ball here sets up Ellsworth with runners in prime scoring position. Then with two outs and the bases loaded, it's Ba who plays hero again with a walk-off single, sending the Eagles to the state title game. I'm very, like, I'm super, super excited, and uh, I love these guys. I'm glad that I was able to help out and perform for them, and... I just hope we can do good in the state game. To the Class B North softball final now. Winslow facing Herman at Coffin Field. Black Raiders clinging to a 1-0 lead. Emma Michaud gets the strikeout in the fifth inning. And they would get some insurance in the sixth. First, a wild pitch scores Leah Knight from third to make it 2-0 Black Raiders. And then a perfect bunt here. Geeks gives it a 3-0 advantage in the sixth inning. And in the seventh, Misho shuts the door here, gets the ground out to first. That sends Winslow to the state championship for the second straight year, 3-0 to zero the final in that one. We'll go on to Class C now. Bucksport facing Mount View at Mansfield. We'll start in the third inning here. Golden Bucks at the plate. Jake Goody finds a hole up the middle. Tyler Hallett comes around to score, and the Bucks are up two. Now, later in the inning, Cam Rich deciding, well, I want to keep it going, so I will. Another base knock makes it a 3-0 Bucksport lead. Mustangs answered in the ensuing frame, though. Calvin Jewett here cut the lead in half on this two-RBI single. Noah Hurd was strong on the mound. Fantastic all night, but so was Goody as he earns the complete game win, and Bucksport advances to states 4-2 the final. It's been a long season. We put a lot of work into practices and games, and I think all those just led to this moment. Keep us on 4-2 to two victory, and now we're on to the, the big one. And for the softball, Class C North title, number five, Orono, number two, Matt Nockook. Fifth inning here, the Lynx already up a couple. Jenny Witten sends one to right center, just out of the reach of Juliana Morrison. That makes it a 4-0 lead. Then in the sixth, Ava Sutherland here delivers the knockout punch with this drive to center all the way to the fence and inside the park home run would solidify the win 10-0 as Matt Nockook captures the Class C North crown. It's huge. The last time we won anything was our eighth grade year when we played for the middle school. So it was really cool to do it again our senior year and kind of have somewhat of a repeat. 
All right, back to Manfield now. You see a pattern? I do. Machias battling Stearns in the Class D North final. Pitching duel early. Aiden Sanders gets the strikeout here. We will go to the fourth. And Machias got things going. Ethan Libby with the RBI double to make it a 2-0 Bulldogs lead. And then in the seventh, Bulldogs just got loose off their leash. First, Ethan Foss with the RBI here. And then it's Libby again getting the job done. Machias would explode for nine runs in the inning. More than enough for Cashman Feeney. He gets the one-hit win. It's the Bulldogs repeat 11-0 the final. It's really good to be back here again this year. Uh, as you can see, it didn't go so great early. But we were waiting for that inning to open it up. One of the best things that you could really do. And last but certainly not least, Class D softball. Could the Bulldogs get the sweep? The baseball team looking on facing Hodgson. Hawks already up two. Great defense catching the bunt here. Sadie Thompson is there at second for the double play. Heads up defense there from Hodgson. In the fifth, same score. Jada Case gets the strikeout to keep it close. But Marissa Dow in the circle and the Hawks just too strong. Last chance for Machias, but it's Aaliyah Matheson again with the defense. Hawks take their first ever Northern Maine title 2-0. to zero. It's amazing. It's definitely the best feeling in the world, especially since we've worked so hard to get here. Long season and we all just really wanted it. It feels great. All right, so congratulations. Eight champions on baseball and softball together and they will vie for the state championships on Saturday. And of course, we will have full coverage of that in the coming week. All right, that's sports. We'll be right back after the break. Durable, sturdy, stylish. Not Joe. Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find solid wood, built to last, made in main dressers, bureaus, and nightstands. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. Protect your boat with a Shoremaster Boat Lift from Hammond Lumber Company. With premium lift options and flexible configurations, there's a Shoremaster that's right for you. And their exclusive Whisper Winds offers quiet operation. Shoremaster lifts are easy to install, but if you need it, Hammond can arrange professional installation. And delivery is available from any of Hammond's 21 locations statewide. Get back on the water quickly and easily and enjoy summer made simple with a Shoremaster Boat Lift from Hammond Lumber Company. People today, they could spend half their lives over 50. So it helps to have a wise friend and fierce defender like AARP to help you take control of your health along the way. What's in it? I don't know, but it's green. Green's good. Whether it's your wellness. What are you in for? Cholesterol check. Cool. Your brain health. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Or your endurance. That's why the younger you are, the more you need AARP. Join today. Yes, yes, yes. I'll have what she's having, and you can too. Get ready for the good dish. Delicious twists on your favorite comfort foods. Decadent desserts you can whip up in no time. And game-changing shortcuts. What's for dinner is about to get way easier and way more fun than doing the dishes. So get ready to get dishing. Weekdays at 1 on Fox 22. Comfy, cozy, relaxing. Not Joe. Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find rockers, recliners, sofas, and easy chairs. Quality furniture, affordable prices. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. Welcome back. We're here with Matt Bishop. He's the curator and operations manager of Bangor Historical Society. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. How are you? Uh, it's a beautiful day outside. Yeah, yeah. Can't complain. No. So we're, we'd love to talk about the events that the Bangor Historical Society is hosting this summer. Can you explain what they are and, and what they're about? Yeah, uh, we're continuing once again with our walking tours, which have been so popular throughout the years. Uh, we have a great one out at Mount Hope Cemetery, kind of exploring the history and the symbolism of of the stones, the residents, and also how tying it right into uh, Bangor in our region's history as well. Uh, we also do like a Bangor 101, we call it the best of Bangor, just kind of walking through the streets downtown, talking about the architecture and still the history of Bangor, but kind of in the downtown setting. And we also have a couple that are a little bit more uh, focused topics. We have one talking about the fire of 1911 that drastically changed uh, our cityscape, most specifically like 
uh, Central Street, Franklin Street, Exchange Street, and I mean, it was just such a devastating fire and kind of looking on how the city rebuilt in such a small time frame, but also um, kind of the perseverance of our community coming back from that. And we do have another more unique one where we have a wonderful, wonderful tour guide who uh, portrays one of Bangor's most notorious madams of the evening for our okay. Devil's Half Acre tour. Awesome. And those are all ramping up. Um, we have some, actually we have one tomorrow night and a, gr a really grateful schedule coming up. Awesome, where can people find ways to buy tickets for those? Uh, a couple of ways to do it. Uh, we have a full calendar on our Facebook page and our website. Uh, you can also call us at 942-1900 you can talk to me and I can get you the full schedule or uh, email us. Uh, the email address would be curator at bangorhistoricalsociety.org. And Sounds we'll make good. sure to put all that in the website so our viewers can see that. Absolutely. Now, going off a couple of years ago, we had, you know, the Bicentennial of May in 2020. Had some things happen that kind of pushed them off. Is there any big historical event coming up in 2022 <sighs> for Maine specifically this year? Not so much this year. I mean, we got a couple of other ones coming up uh, more, I mean, nationwide and some other big anniversaries. But this year, is, it's... It's a little quieter for overall anniversaries, but I mean, it's nice just to be able to get back out and yeah. continue the process that we've been working on for so long. And you have some people, do you, now the people who you see during these tours, do they come back or are you seeing new faces all the time? Oh, there's definitely a lot of people that come back. Uh, some of the tours, like I've had uh, a guy I actually went to high school with. Um, he usually shows up to one or two of the tours every year and... Uh, usually brings a couple people, so he's kind of feeding people to us to It's a great uh, help social event. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so many people, especially Mount Hope Cemetery. I've been to that they one. I love that They don't one. realize how large the cemetery is. They just don't understand the expanse, the history, and it's just an amazing place to go. Um, it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous piece of property, and we're really, really lucky that we have it right here at our disposal, uh, but uh, there's so many things that we talk about that people are just not exposed to, even in school. So it's just great to be able to um, educate uh, kids, adults, grandparents, whole families into the history of the region. A little different side of history yeah. there. You can see something that you don't learn in school and a great opportunity where you get to hang out and you know, be around good people. Yeah. yeah. So um, when will the Hill House, where Bangor Historical Society is located, open up? Yes, the Hill House at 159 Union Street, we are hoping to open Tuesday, which is the 21st. Um, our hours are going to be 10 to 4 on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And we don't have a set date for Sundays yet, but we're going to be trying to open a Sunday or two a month. Awesome. Awesome. That's Very great. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We Thank love you. having live interviews. Be sure to keep in touch and we can get you back in here. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Let's throw things over to Devin Biggs. He has another look at our forecast. Thank you very much, Joe and Emma. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Patriot Homes and Design Center in Ellsworth. We do it all from modular mobile and site build homes to porches, garages, roofs, and more. Alrighty, not too bad out there this morning. Maybe a few clouds trying to sneak in here. But otherwise, a good amount of sunshine. I hope you plan to go outside today. It will be a great day to do so, though. But we are watching our next system. It looks a little bit like this here with some storms across the upper Midwest. And a warm front right about in here is going to be tracking in our direction as well. We'll notice some warmer temperatures and humidity that will begin to move in here later on. But wave heights are not too bad right now at all. If you're heading close to the ocean, water temperatures may still be a little low. But two to three foot wave heights being noted at this point. So nothing too dramatic happening at this point. The winds will be calm today, though, really calming down later on tonight. And then by tomorrow, look what happens. So gusty winds up to about 25, maybe 30 miles per hour will be possible, though that'll be out of the south. So we'll have to watch for more winds. I'll begin to move in ahead of our next system. We're average high is 75 degrees. We'll get above that today by making it into the lower 80s with middle to upper 70s by Thursday and Friday. Then cooling off as a cold front moves in by the weekend of the middle to upper 60s, then back in the 70s as we head towards Monday and Tuesday. Let's take out the muggy meter, though. When that cold front passes, of course, we'll notice the dew points that'll rise briefly into the 60s, maybe getting close to the 70s in a few spots. So cold front passes through Friday and a Saturday, hence why the temperatures fall off 
The dew points will also begin to, begin to improve after that. But if you're heading out the door today, though, the UV index is very high. It's at an 8, so that means a bird time of simply 15 minutes. So the hat, the sunglasses, sunscreen, shade needed as you have the door to avoid a bad sunburn. The future cast for today, partly cloudy is what we're going with today, but a lot of sunshine will be expected. Maybe some clouds later on to the day into the evening time frame. No, but by tomorrow, though, maybe a few more clouds trying to approach. But overall, looking pretty decent before rain begins to approach as we head towards Thursday night and the parts of Friday morning. So a forecast for today, get outside and enjoy it. Lower 80s under a partly cloudy sky. That north wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Later on tonight, lower 50s on the way under a partly cloudy sky and the wind overall looking nice and calm. For tomorrow, middle 70s under a mostly cloudy sky getting windy out there as well. That south wind getting up to about 25 miles per hour. Alrighty, here's a look at your extended forecast brought to you by Patriot Homes and Design Center in Ellsworth, showing storm chances returning by Friday. Temperatures in the upper 70s, upper 60s on Saturday with a chance for storms, and a few showers on Sunday, highs in the mid 60s. Breathe in. Can you sense it? The feeling of becoming something greater? Here in the heart of Maine, you'll find a place that the innovators of tomorrow have called home for the last 150 years. The University of Maine. Ranked as one of the nation's top research institutions, our opportunities know no bounds. Because you, Maine, isn't just a destination. It's a gateway to new horizons that shape who we are. We are you, Maine. Spectrum presents Stream Home Makeover with JoJo. We transform the Joneses' home, upgrading their entertainment experience with the best TV and internet services from Spectrum. Let's go! With Spectrum TV, you get your favorite channels and streaming apps, plus tons of on-demand. Switch to Spectrum TV and internet for only $49.99 a month each with no contract. Call 1-844-480-4713. Ready for more? Take a look! <laughs> With the free Spectrum TV app, you can stream live sports, news, and more on all your devices, inside, outside, and on the go. Wow, that's awesome! There's more. We powered up the game room with Spectrum Internet, which gives you the fast, reliable speeds you need to power all your devices. And it comes with free security suites, so you can feel completely safe and secure. Switch to Spectrum TV and Internet for only $49.99 a month each with free modem. Call 1-844-480-4713. Give your home a Spectrum Stream home makeover. Call now. Next through, do you have any dating advice? I don't know what I'm doing out there. I don't either, is the truth. <laughs> Padma Lakshmi. She's facing her toughest food critic yet. Leo, what do you think? It's undescribable. Plus, Jane Fonda and a heated debate over or under. Even you guys are moaning. What am I missing? The Drew Barrymore Show, Wednesday at 3 on Fox 22. With Father's Day only a few days away, we want to share a recipe that we think dad and all the dads in your life will love. I mean, what dad doesn't like steak? And when it's marinated in beer, all the better. We start off by making an outrageous marinade by mixing together some soy sauce, brown sugar, minced garlic, and get this, a good amount of beer. Now we marinate a flank steak in this in the fridge for at least a couple hours or even overnight. Come dinner time, we take the steak out of the marinade and toss it onto our outdoor grill, or we can even do this right in the grill pan, right on our stove top. All it takes is about five minutes per side or until it's done to your liking. Then we sprinkle on some sea salt and some freshly ground pepper before slicing it thinly across the grain. Does this look mouthwatering or what? Between the richness of the beer and the wow we get from the garlic, you can't miss. So here's what I suggest. Go online and get the recipe for Dad's Beer Marinated Steak. So you'll be ready to impress your dad this Father's Day with a steak that'll be loved as much as he is. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, wishing dads everywhere a happy Father's Day filled with lots of, ooh, it's so good. Mm -mm -mm.
Love how it took only a few hours to notice the bottom <laughs> super said use dad's favorite beer. Oh my gosh, please, yeah, please, I didn't uh, notice that either. Please, um, try, maybe not. Maybe, maybe uh, you know, buy some extra because we all know dad, dads right. love their beer. So. Right, maybe, yeah. <laughs> maybe try to keep it not on the... just the, the one. Uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> so some kids in Oregon are treating cereal boxes like dominoes, breaking a world record. The May Richardson Elementary School unofficially broke the world record for most cereal boxes arranged and knocked over like dominoes. They piled up nearly 7,000 cereal boxes through and around the